Welcome back to the channel. This is the Earth Science Classroom. This video is on geology and we're looking at a geologic principle called cross-cutting relationships. This is the Earth Science Classroom. In order to appreciate cross-cutting relationships in geology and in sedimentary rock layers, we need to understand Steno's other principles which relate to the relative dating of rocks, which includes the law of superposition, the law of original horizontality, and the law of lateral continuity. Now, the first one, superposition, relates to the closest one to the surface is the youngest, as it gets deeper, increases with depth, the age of the rock is going to increase. So A will be the youngest, B the next youngest, C older, and D the oldest in this diagram. Then we have the horizontality. So they're laid down, they're accumulated, the sediments of class, they're deposited through gravity in a horizontal flat strata bed, and there we have sedimentation and lithification occurs. Then we have the law of lateral continuity, which means that these rocks are the same across a lateral area of geography or location. So these geologic principles apply before we get to the principle of cross-cutting relationships. Now, if we have the addition of these two extra rock layers, E and F, to our diagram, this relates to cross-cutting relationships that Steno mentioned in 1669. The fact is, or the rule is, that anything that protrudes or goes through a rock that must be younger than the rock it's going through. For example, rocks A, B, C, and D must have been existing and present before rock E was able to protrude through them up towards the surface. Now this rock E could have been an intrusive dike or a volcanic dike or any kind of igneous rock that is volcanic in nature because it reaches the surface. So a basaltic floodplain perhaps. Then we have rock F and the rock F goes through rock D and rock C but not rock B. So we assume that F is younger than both rock C and D because it's going through them but not all the way through and Possibly rock A and B, close to the surface, they are younger than rock F. Again, we'd only know if we did a different kind of calculation on the rock for its age, which would be absolute dating, which is the use of radioactive decay and radiometric dating of isotopes. So this cross-cutting relationship is the understanding that any rock that goes through a pre-existing rock must be younger than the rock that's pre-existing. We can apply the same principle of any kind of intruding igneous or metamorphic rock through these sedimentary layers to any kind of fault lines that are in the area or plate boundaries. And we can see which of the geographic or geological features came first or came second. So in this case, we have a fault line that is producing a fault scarp and this is a reverse dip slip fault where the A, B, C, D rock on the left is being pushed up through compressional forces, tectonic forces, and the rocks on the right hand side have stayed at the same original level or elevation, but the ones on the left have been pushed up. So a uplift situation of the surface on the left. So we can see that all of the rocks, A, B, C, and D, were all present, all laid down, all formed before this fault line occurred because all four layers are present and the fault line is going through all of these layers. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe and maybe hit the like button. And if you like more on this content, please check out my channel, which has all these videos on earth science.